Hey friends, Coach Shelby and Coach Christine welcoming you in and letting you know it's time for brunch, where there is always an open table, a hot cup of coffee, and endless running fun to keep you moving and grooving. So let's lace up those shoes, put a smile on your face, and log some miles. If I had one of those wrestling bells, I would ring it, but I don't. So we're going to just go into our warm-ups. Going to start off with some calf raises, give those toes and calves some love in three, two, and one. Bring them up high, 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 and then let them down nice and controlled super gently here. It is not a race. Feel all of your toes. Maybe give them a little extra spread and feeling them stretch out before they take the impact of your running. And of course, not sleeping on the fact this is a calf stretch after all. But we make it all worthwhile. We're putting the sweet and savory in every step. Gonna go ahead next and go into some lateral leg swings in three, two, and one. You can hold a chair, your best running friend, or maybe just put your hands on your hips if you want to work on some balance. You're going to take your right leg and put it across your body like a pendulum, going from one side to another, stretching it all out, opening up those hips a little bit extra. And then we're going to go ahead and switch on over to your left leg, doing the same type of motion. Again, you might notice some differences in one hip versus another. That's okay. Breathe into it. If you need to stop and give a little extra side lunge, maybe, go for it. There are no rules. Just making yourself feel ready and limber. Next, we're going to go ahead and do a little sumo squat hip stretch in three, two, and one. A nice wide stance here, your toes pointing out, and you're going to squat it down. If you can't get all the way down, that is a-okay. Go as far as you can. You can even take your elbows and push out of your knees a little bit. Again, not focusing as much on getting as far down as you can, but feeling those hip flexor areas really opening up. Since we don't get a lot of lateral movement when we run, we need to make sure that we're giving all of those parts some love and not just the money areas. But I'm gonna round it off with some of those glute loving squats in three, two, and one. Coming back up, bringing your toes so they are pointing forward and parallel in line with your hips, squatting it down again. You'll probably feel a little bit residual from that sumo squat hip stretch, but that is a-okay. If you're feeling it a little too much, don't squat down with as much gusto, just keeping it nice and controlled, and maybe even giving a little extra squeeze up at the top of that squat. Because if there is one thing that I know, it is squat it like it's hot, because we are getting ready to roll on out and go into our five-minute warm-up walk in three, two, and one. Coach Christine, how are your glutes today? That's interesting. I guess I didn't think much about them until you mentioned it. I think they're feeling really, really good. (laughs) I think. You you don't spend all day just thinking about your glutes? No, I guess maybe I I need to spend more time considering my glutes. But yes, they're doing really, really good, which of course... I love to think about my glutes, though, when I start to go into my walk and engaging them, maybe even contracting them a little bit as I walk strongly, especially for a warm-up, because it is quite possible that a lot of us don't think about our glutes and we do become a bit um, self, a little too reliant maybe on those quads, especially for us women who have really strong quads. And by that, I mean all women generally have strong quads, but usually quad dominant. So thinking about those booties and squeezing them, as you mentioned, in those warm-ups is always good to help us have a good long run. So yeah, Coach, thank you for, for bringing my derriere into this conversation. You're welcome. <laughs> Never fear. I've got I've got your back side. Definitely, you do. <laughs> <laughs> well, friends, we are looking forward to having conversation today with a very special guest. Um, who's coming on in in just a few moments while we're wrapping up this warm up. But let's say that we are going to lean fully in to all of the things that bring us joy that don't have to do with running. So today for your special graphic, we'd love for you to share at Time for Brunch podcast on Instagram. You should have received it in your newsletter, a graphic with maybe your favorite cross training workouts, 
that are fun, that bring you joy. And we're also going to have you lean in if you haven't yet found anything besides running that is a cross training that brings you joy. I think you're going to leave today with maybe at least considering um, something that our special guests will be telling us all about. But if not, then we want you to lean into trying to find and making it a priority at some time this year to find something that brings you joy outside of running that you can utilize as your cross training go to. And this is a twofold reason because we've talked about before. We love running. Don't get us wrong. We're not hanging up our shoes. But one, cross training will make you a stronger runner. And it is good, like everything else, to have a backup. Maybe you're going to be going into an off cycle of running. Maybe you have a little over usage and you still want to stay active. But running is uh, running and you aren't seeing eye to eye and you have to take a little break. You have to see some other people. Or maybe again, I know it's not our favorite thing to talk about, but sometimes running, we're not in it for the long run for various reasons. So it's always good to have that fallback, that little activity side chick, if you will. This is the only time I'm going to recommend having a side chick to your main squeeze. That's so funny because that's actually exactly how I've always referred to my cross training. It's kind of like I'm having like a little bit of like a love affair with um, whatever that cross training activity is. So coach, we've talked a lot about how I can be a bit, um, I sample all of the different physical activity. I know you love walking, but is that your go-to cross training or do you have another thing that kind of makes your heart sing? I think right now for me, walking is my most accessible. It's what I can fit in. Would I say it's my absolute favorite side chick? No. But it's what I've got right now. So I really have developed that relationship and developed that love for it. Because I really do love running. My number one cross training of choice if I have no parameters, is biking. I love biking. My derriere does not like biking. I have padded bike shorts that does help. I mean, not to be TMI, but there's a lot going on down there. Um, my glutes aren't that squishy enough to like give me enough, enough cushioning. I almost said something really inappropriate and not safe for work there. Um, oh, goodness. You can, you, you can use your imagination, but I love biking. I okay. really do. So you like indoor cycling or outdoor cycling or both? I prefer outdoor. Um, okay. I've never taken a full-on spin class. I do have a trainer that I can put my bike on, which I did enjoy. Um, doesn't exactly get the same juices flowing, but I'll, I'll give it an honorable mention. But I'd rather go out and about and feel the bugs hitting my face and the sun on me and the sweat and now I really want to go for a bike ride. Oh, good. Well, maybe after we are done um, with this conversation, because if you don't want to go out for a bike ride when you're done here or you're getting through your run, you are still going to probably want to add a little bit of extra, um, something that may make your heart skip a beat or two. So with that said, let's take it into our very first endurance block and welcome on in our special guest in three, two, and one. All right, brunchers, as we get into this endurance block, we're pulling up a chair and welcoming in our special guest, Bernadette Henry, the fitness guru connoisseur, teaching us to get moving, loving ourselves, and bringing back some old school jump roping, which I'm excited to hear more about. So welcome, Bernadette. Thank you for coming. You're welcome. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. I have to say, I don't think Christine has stopped talking about you. And I, she is, she's a fangirl. We're not going to lie. We already covered that. But I am so excited to learn more, to hear more. So while obviously your story is out there, why don't you give us your own little bio and tell us about yourself? Okay. Yes. Well, I am Bernadette Henry and I... I'm just like a happy, fun, energetic person. I always love to start about me before I talk about my roles. So I just love life. I love being the life at a party. And everything that I do is a part of my personality. I believe in bringing my personality everywhere that I go. And um, according to my, about my roles, I am a mental health case manager. I have been doing that for the last 20 plus years. I'm a jump rope instructor, been jumping rope since I'm a little child and developed it as an adult. 
And I never knew that jumping rope would bring me all of these places that it has. And then also, too, I life coach. I work with women in um, midlife, manage their confidence and self-worth and things like that because we start to lose a lot of these things as we go get older. I'm the mom of three boys. Two of them are special needs, so on the autism spectrum. So that's an additional challenge to my life, and I'm a wife as well. That was the wow. best elevator pitch ever. <laughs> yeah. So I think that it's quite evident just off of that, friends, as to why I'm such a big fan. Truly, in every single comment that I see you post or anything that I see you post on your social media, you are absolutely curating happiness and joy and creating a whole lot of fun, especially even during the pandemic, where I think that sometimes um, things were a little bit harder to find some joy and you were still there spreading your message of just finding little ways to incorporate, well, not little ways because jumping rope is definitely a workout. Yes, um, it is. But finding ways is, is seriously one of the hardest workouts when I feel like, and I want to hear more about that as well, but I've um, used, I don't think I could jump rope for more than 10 minutes, to be honest. <laughs> it is so hard, but tell us more about, so jumping rope is something you did as a childhood. Do you feel like it, that's you brought it more into your adult life because it does connect you to that inner child and that joy? Um, not initially. So as a child, like single rope had like, it was, I was done sporadically. And as a kid, you know, growing up black in the Bronx and Harlem, we went outside for lunch break and we did like jump rope games, single rope games and double dutch rope games. And that was what we did. I really specifically only have two memories of the single rope but it really was developed in my adulthood. So like I used to hang out, you know, with my friend every weekend and it's a area in New York called Union Square and there's a gym called Equinox. And I'm like, you know what, let's just go in there. And I was not into fitness at that time. And we went in there, I picked up the schedule. It said arrow jump, arrow box. And I'm like, wait a minute, is this a jump rope class? And they said, yes. I said, oh my gosh, like, let me join. You know, and I joined on the strength of that. Like I said, I was not into fitness. I was not into working out. This was just a random occurrence of walking in a gym and looking at a schedule and seeing jump rope. And it's been history since then. So cool. I can't, I, I tried double dutch as a kid. My coordination skills are horrendous. I will say I can hold the rope, but I cannot jump the double dutch rope. Oh, it's so easy. So, so easy. We just have to take a class with Bernadette. And I'm like, yeah, exactly. I need to move to New York and (laughs) I need to figure it out. That's gonna be a hard sell with my family though, but we'll see. We'll see. (laughs) So you got into jumping grip, but then it's kind of, as you mentioned, it's transformed your life. While you are a social worker by trade, there is no doubt that this aspect of fitness and wellness is a huge part of who you are now. Do you feel that it quite, as your book implies, it kind of sounds to me like it helps transform your life and you're feeling like it's such an empowering tool that people can use? Yes, it is. So I think it goes through phases and changes, right? So as a kid, it was fun, right? Jump rope is an activity. You're at a playground with your friends or you're outside your house. And it's just something fun, something you just do to do. It's never considered exercise. Kind of like you see kids nowadays, they're doing burpees and things like that. And I'm like, I'm like just wait till they get like 30 years old and they realize <laughs> <laughs> it actually works, you know? And That's kind of the same thing. So like when I joined Equinox back when I was like 19 years old, jump rope, I I think it still hadn't clicked that it was exercise, right? So I was so busy like being like the proper form and sizing the rope. And then there was another boxer, middleweight boxer there that took me under his wing and he used to teach me like a lot of tricks. So it was more, I guess in those early phases, the early twenties, it was more technical for me. And then as I moved along in my twenties, it was okay. We're just going to add this into my workout regimen because then I noticed that I started losing weight and that was not the plan. It was not the goal. So that's when I saw it as a tool. But then like, of course, you know, in my twenties, I made a whole big mess of the twenties and you know, later on in life, as I started to get myself together in my thirties, um, as stress increased, you know, you start having children, you like have like a real career. It became now stress management. So it's like, okay, this is my escape. Let me go to the gym. And when I turn on my music and my headphones, like the music is pumping. I'm just having fun. It's like, woo, let's go. And it became a release. 
So then now I'm in my 40s and now I see jump rope as exercise and a release. You know, trying to get people to realize, hey, look, you can still have fun and work out because if you're not having fun, like what's the point? You're not going to do it. You're not going to sustain it. And, you know, of course you have to uh, conduct your workouts to meet the needs. So you're going to meet, like if you're trying to lose weight, okay, you're going to meet that. Or if you're trying to gain more cardio, you know, vascular benefits, you can still do that. If you just want to have fun, you can still do that. And I still mix it all, you know, personally to this day. And as well, the health benefits, like it's helped me kick pre-diabetes. It's helped me reduce blood pressure medication. Not saying completely take me off, but it's helped to reduce. And it just have these overall benefits, you know, mind, body, and spirit. You're speaking all of our love languages right yes. now. Because seriously, I, we say that all the time. It's like for us, for running is our, our movement of choice. But it's like, if it's not fun for you, like right. why, why put yourself through? Again, we have so many other responsibilities from the day that we don't necessarily maybe find the most joy in. So it's like, why make your movement part of it? And I do want to rewind real quick. So I, I am a novice in my jump roping, uh, my jump roping knowledge. So is it boxing and jump roping all combined into one? Because you had said about the boxing. Well, I would, well, the class, it was called Arrow Box, Arrow Jump. So think of like Taibo. So in the, like this class was taught by a professional middleweight boxer, Michael Elagide Jr. And basically it was like a class where 30 minutes of it was jumping rope. And then 30, the other 30 minutes of it was like punching, doing boxing moves. And like boxing and jump rope is closely intertwined. And I would actually say that with um, jump rope in a lot of sports, like jump, the reason why boxers um, use, like, like the reason why you see them like jumping and, and running all the time is because of the cardiovascular benefits. And like, you need these things, especially as a boxer. Like when you get in that boxing ring, the boxer has to punch. They have to do offense and defense and move around and try to like block themselves. It's, there's just so many things that you have to do that you don't realize how quickly you can you know, become winded. Like I trained boxing back in 2005. And you know, for me watching TV all the time, it, I used to say to myself, hey, why are the rounds only three minutes, you know? And then I got into the ring for my first sparring session and within 30 seconds, I was just like, oh my gosh, this is why boxers and martial artists and really every every athlete jump rope is just not glorified. But believe me, in off seasons, jump rope is the tool that's used to help you maintain your cardiovascular and certain other sports is helping with agility. And even for runners, I've had a lot of runners tell me, hey, look, I do this when I'm not training for a race because it helps me with my breathing and conditioning. Um, because one thing about jump rope is that you have to constantly move. So when you turn the rope, guess what? You have to jump over the rope. It's no way that you can do it without it. And I always tell people like, you know, with running, jogging, speed walking, which, you know, I do speed walk like you can drop your arms for a couple of minutes and you can still maintain your movement maybe not as fast or whatever your goal is for doing it but you but you can still drop something and keep moving with the jump rope it's like action reaction turn you have to jump turn you have to jump so these are kind of you know some of the good things about jumping rope and why like your athletes use it and why you know it's really married to boxing I'm thrilled because the footwork aspect, even alone, like I, I, not to downplay the rest of the greatness that you just said, but the the footwork and for speed walking and running like that cadence. I, I mean, your cadence. Literally. Is, yeah. Christine. Just about yep. to say that. There's so many benefits, friends. If you guys are sleeping on the jump rope, it's time for you to head on over to Bernadette's website that's in the episode notes and go check out her classes. Maybe even check out her shop and get a couple of jump ropes or, I don't know, borrow one from your kid to get started. But cardiovascular endurance out of the gate is one of the top ones. Like you said, Bernadette breathing cadence, absolutely incredible. If you're struggling with having like really increasing your cadence in a really good measured way where we don't want you necessarily um, trying to improve your cadence overnight, knowing that it's going to take a little bit of time. But I also love that jump roping or jumping rope and um, running have a very similar commonality, which it's almost a single leg balance exercise on both. While I know that you could definitely jump rope with both your feet at one time, when you get into more of the advanced things, it's basically a, a, what you would need for a good, strong running form for you to be able to jump rope successfully. 
Right. And this, you know, I actually, you know, I interviewed my physical therapist and in that interview, we mentioned like when you're running, you're literally jumping because both feet are off the ground, like almost at the same time. So running equal jumping. It's, mm-hmm. it's amazing that like I don't like running, but it's, it's essentially the same thing. Yep. That was my question. If like, cause me going back to when I jumped rope back in the day, I'm not going to specify when, but back in the day, I always did two feet, like the, my feet at the same time. So is proper form actually one foot at a time? And how that's a mind body connection all in its own, I would assume. Yes, it's like jumping rope. It's so many moving pieces. So you can jump on both feet. You can jump on one foot. You know, it's just so many different variations that you can do. But I would say um, footwork wise, it's a great transitional tool. It's a great tool to help you um, be quick on your feet. Um, a great tool to just help you kind of get around. So as far as the footwork, I think it plays a very, very important role when it comes to jumping rope. And um, like other sports, like I said, your running, your football, your baseball, your volleyball, because all these things, remember, people are on their feet. They're required to pivot. They're required to change, go from one thing to the next. So having that rhythm and cadence is definitely counts. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And friends, if you're not following Bernadette already, you definitely need to, because there's so many great videos that she posts of all of what I would consider advanced um, for me. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> but there's so much fun to watch. And like you said, it does bring a lot of fun and high energy and joy to every single time that I see you post one of your your workouts, or your routines. Um, so I do want to talk and I know that you've got a lot in the works. I, I don't know how much caffeine, if any, that you consume to do all the things that you do. But I got to say, we're impressed right out of the gate by just the bio. So you did come out with a book. And why I think that I want to reference it so much is because we talk a lot on here about how we could rewrite our stories because of running. And that's exactly your book. It's you, how to rewrite and kind of manifest your future life, the life that you deserve, that you want, that you should be going after in so many different ways um, because of jumping rope. Can you talk to us a little bit about how you draw those parallels of to how people can use this as a as a jumping off point? Sorry, bad pun. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so like I said, yeah, jump off with you. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> so like I said, the physical jump up uh, benefits of jump rope has been amazing, um, as well as like the ones that's non-physical, you know, health related. And year, a couple of years ago, I wanted to find a way to bridge the gap between the physical act of jumping rope and then the mental aspect of it, you know, because I am, I've been a case manager and it's closely related to social work, but not quite social work, but very closely related. Um, I've been doing this for a long time. I've been helping people for a long time. And I had to think about my life and my story and just the things that I, that I've gone through, like I said, in the twenties, you know, it was just like a lot of things and to the point where it drove me to make an attempt on my life and I as I started going you know throughout the years I started thinking of jump rope and how it metaphorically relates to life you know with the jump rope you have to turn the rope and then you have to jump if you turn the rope and you don't jump the rope is going to hit your foot it's going to hit your ankle it's just going to hit whatever it's going to hit until you take that action and it's kind of like the things that we go through in life whether it's our daily everyday stresses things that were left unresolved anger unforgiveness it's like the more you keep moving on and not taking action it's going to eventually catch up to you so you have to take action and back in 2018 i came up with the acronym journey of the underdog making progress and that was basically, you know, saying that, you know, one, at one point in, in, in time in life, you're going to be that underdog, whether it's to yourself or to somebody else. But until you take the necessary steps to move the needle forward, you're not going to go forward. You're going to stay backwards. And some people, it may take exercise. Some people, for me, it took therapy. Some people, it may take medication. Like whatever it is that you need to do to take that action, you have to do it. And, you know, just two or three years ago, I started talking about during the pandemic, I started talking about jump more and people, it started to click like, okay, this is not just about the physical act of jumping, but oh my gosh, we have to have our mindset, you know, in order to move forward. Like a lot of times we go through these things and we think it's, we look at all the external factors 
And a lot of times we'll say, oh, we don't have time. We don't have money. We don't have this. We don't have support. We don't have this. But a lot of times we have to look within to solve a lot of our problems. The reason why we're not moving forward. So maybe it's that anger that we're holding on to. It's that unforgiveness that we're holding on to. It's that lack of self-confidence that we're holding on to because we didn't work through it. So my goal was is to empower women both on a physical and the mental health side because they're all correlated. Like you cannot have one without the other. Yes. I, I mean like, like it, that's I know. I'm like I, I my brain's like on on overload with so much goodness right now. You should see Christine and I were like talking with our hands, like trying to motion this forward. Like I want the emoji preach automatically like it's just that's what's going through my brain because you speak to so much of of our mission, but what I love from your book, and hopefully you're okay with me, it's first of all, yeah, from of your book, it's more of, from what I, my opinion, so please correct me if I'm wrong, it feels very workbook style, where although it interlaces your history and your story and your biography, it also allows and comes from a place of kind of people really having some thoughtful, introspective questions, so they can start to deal with those things and have that that next point where they can jump off into um, creating and manifesting the life that they want. But I love just out of the gate in your preface or like your forward, where you have the quote that says, the moment that you begin to prioritize yourself, your dream and the vision that you were put onto this earth to accomplish is the same moment that you realize your true power. That gives me chills to say that out loud because I think that so many of us are living our lives without realizing that we have a mission. We have real power out there to be able to change others' lives, which is what you're doing exactly. And we're so excited to have you on talking about it. Yeah, so you hit the nail on the head. Absolutely. And I appreciate you being open about your attempt on your life and working through that and how finding what works. Because we are obviously, we're very pro-therapy, pro-medication if you need it, pro-movement. Um, and I'd, I'd be interested to know with your jump roping and boxing both intertwined, we talk a lot about kind of that, that um, zen-like quality of running to where you have to really focus on what you're doing to have the proper form, to have the proper movement. Do you find the same in jumping rope and the boxing aspect of it to where you have to kind of shut off one part of your brain and it almost gets you in that meditative state? Yes, I believe so. And and like I always say, it really depends on your purpose or your focus for that workout at that time. And I always tell you, you know, like exercise is not therapy. It's therapeutic, but it's not right. therapy. So while I may use, like right now, I use exercise for fun. I use it for work. I use it as an escape to get away. But if you do have like really deep issues that are left unresolved, you have to get the help because exercise, of course, is going to give you those happy endorphins. If you get up from this podcast and go take a run and come back, you're going to be like so happy so energetic so like ready to take over the world but eventually that's going to die down and if you don't have the coping mechanisms to deal with it then that's the problem you know like i you know sometimes i don't really go to therapy or anything like that anymore but i don't i wouldn't tell or suggest that people use exercise in place of therapy especially if you have not dealt with the issues like use exercise yes. for work use it for fun use it for meditation use it, use it for therapy just remember that it's not therapeutic it's a band-aid if you're choosing to use that. it as a therapy <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely yeah, and it is a band-aid because and mm -hmm. we say that a lot well while the connotation of oh running or movement is my therapy is wonderful on the surface there's so much more that goes into it and i think especially from professionals like yourself to to have us keep reiterating that is so important to not only break the stigma but also not lose again the joy that the movement should should bring you right so friends, we, again, in our episode notes, you'll have all the places that you can find Bernadette, but the book that we're discussing is Jumping the Rope, Move Yourself and Manifest Your Success. Um, absolutely super poignant. And if you head to her website, I believe, Bernadette, I hope I'm not speaking improperly, that you'll sign it, you'll autograph it before it gets mailed out or, yes. or do people they, have to, if okay. They order, <laughs> yeah, if they order it directly through my website, I'll sign it. Um, if not, you know, you can order it through Amazon, Barnes and Nobles, but if you want... We decided to just order it directly through our website. 
And of course, if you're in the NYC area, maybe even passing through, make sure that you stay in touch so that you can check out one of her live classes. Because now I feel like, Coach Shelby, can we head up to New York City? Like, I, I, I think, think we're going to have to plan. <laughs> we've been throwing around like where we want our retreats to be. And I, I'm thinking New York's going to have to be one. Um, but on a personal note, too, I really appreciate what you're saying about squeezing in the workouts because you said that you have three sons, too, that are on the spectrum. I have a, a young child and it's hard. It is very hard to, one, find the time and make the time, which I think using those type of words are important, like you said, about finding the time, making the time, not that I don't have the time. Um, and... It, it, it is hard to find the time to fill your cup, but it is so important because I don't know about you, but I feel like a better mom when I've gotten some sort of movement in. It gets it gets my jitters out. It kind of just makes me focused. Um, do your kids like jumping rope? I would say my oldest son, he has it nailed. He has it down packed. Like he is like watching him is literally watching me. And um, the, my middle son, he does not like any form of physical activity. <laughs> he, so he jumps rope like, you know, like a, like a little kid that's just starting with like a big turn, a big jump. And then my six-year-old, he's, he does it a little bit. So it depends on what kind of mood he's in. So like I posted a little video on Facebook yesterday with him jumping and he was able to do like three in a row. So um, they, they, they know about it, but some of them are more into it than others. <laughs> Why is it always the activity that we as parents love? Our kids are like, eh, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Here, like I tell them like, hey, don't you know like your mom is like a huge star. She's been on magazines <laughs> and TVs and this and that. And it's like, they're so unfazed until like they see other people walk up to me like, oh my gosh. And yeah, but, but when, they're, when, they're, when they're your own, they're just so unfazed. They was like, what? They keep us humble. They're like, mom, <laughs> can I just have a snack? Like, I, I don't really care what you're doing right now. Like you gave me the wrong color cup. I, we have, we have to have some words. <laughs> well, speaking about snacks, we love ourselves some food here at brunch since it's a playoff of obviously the long run and then getting some food. And Bernadette, we have a little bit of a battle here. Um, Maybe it's not maybe as intense as some of the jumping rope competitions that I've seen go down. It's not that big of a throwdown, but it's pretty intense for us. Coach Shelby for Team Brunch leads Team Savory. Savory. So yeah, so she's got eggs and quiches and stuff on her side. She does Bacon. have bagels. And she's, she's got bagels, which I know are definitely every New Yorker's love. I don't have that on my side, but I do have Team Sweet. So I've got some French toast, some pancakes some fresh berries. I love fresh berries for the record. Um, I also have mimosas on my side. So I'm just going to say like, that's like, she's got bacon. I got mimosas. So Listen, if you... a bagel sandwich trumps a mimosa, you got the, the egg and the cheese and the, and the melty gooiness. And again, New York bagel. I've never actually had one, but an everything bagel, even if you like some locks and some schmear <laughs> on it, I can... Just learned about the lox like last year. I'm just like, where have I been all my life? I literally just learned about the lox bagels. <laughs> my ancestors would roll over with me saying this, but I don't really like lox. But I do like <laughs> I like a bagel and I know. I like to bagel and schmear, so I'm okay. I get to I get to keep my my heritage a little bit. So Bernadette, <laughs> which table would you like to sit at for maybe just the first course? Because you're welcome to attend both, of course. But if you have to pick Team like, Sweet or Team Savor. And mimosa. <laughs> yes. <laughs> It was a mimosa. Best. You know what's so yeah. funny? I, I saw a post yesterday um, with somebody's stories and he made the mimosa and it was like the whole glass. It was a sh it's champagne, right? So yeah. The whole yeah. It was champagne and they had a spray bottle with the orange juice. <laughs> like, that is definitely how I roll on my side, but... <laughs> Well, Bernadette, we can't wait to um, share a mimosa or a bagel sandwich with you in the future. Of course, we're going to stay in touch. And thank you again for coming on. We can't appreciate, we can't express our appreciation sufficiently. Thank you so much, Shelby and Christine. Thank you. As we say, see you later to Bernadette. We're going to say hello to a little pace change in three, two, and one. And if you're not invigorated, if you're not smiling, I suggest you use the button to backspace yourself and go re-listen to that because I'm actually a little jealous that I'm not running or moving right now because that got me pumped up. It, no doubt about it. I was thinking that too. I was like, again, we're 
Friends, you do you and make sure that you stay in whatever you need for today for your long run workout. But I would have such a hard time and not pumping it up during this pace change. So we're here for just another two minutes and 30 seconds. So even if you do need to pull it back and just kind of check in with your form and then maybe pump it up a notch, um, I would say just give it a try. Maybe even for just, I don't know, just a little segment of this three minute pace change. Um, she is so much fun. She, I really honestly don't remember. I do remember finding her on Facebook and it feels like a long, long time ago to me because everything feels like a long, long time ago. But I think that really, as I mentioned when we were talking to her, where it really kind of came alive was watching her during the pandemic because again, such a really difficult time, especially where she's at in that side of the world in New York City, there was such a really big lockdown. So being able to find joy within your fitness because she was able to do it inside so amazing for so many people such a game changer for such a difficult time so I actually travel with a jump rope now I think I've told you that before coach Shelby that I have a jump rope in my car with a kettlebell and a yoga mat are you bringing that to Tokyo with you you know I should absolutely so as of this very instant as people are listening to this I'll be in Tokyo and I don't see why I wouldn't have packed that in resistance bands those are usually the two things that I would pack for a trip because they're a little lighter weight um, definitely no kettlebells across overseas but still still a lot are we of gonna fun. be getting some ig uh ig history story time with you doing jump ropes in the airport or just just I, sitting there and doing some clamshells in the middle of your feel, concourse yeah i feel like i should at the very least kind of do a little bit of jumping rope at mount Fe- mount fuji in the background we'll see if i can make that happen so friends if you wow are that's basic <laughs> that's basic I, i'll have a pumpkin spice green tea chai latte too while I'm there. (laughs) If you can find pumpkin spice when you're over there, I would be heck of a shock. So they have one of the world's, actually, I think they have the world's largest Starbucks in Tokyo. Um, That's really why she's going, guys. Screw the marathon. And in Kyoto, they have the most distinctive, unique, because I think it's like in a Royal Con. They like redid a Royal Con in Starbucks there. So you know that I'll be visiting both. Um, So again, following us at Time for Brunch podcast is where you'll see any of these images if they actually do come to fruition. So so definitely follow us there. But with that said, we're going into our next endurance block in 10 seconds. So breathing nice and deep, pushing all the way through because we're going in three, two, and one. We're going to hang out here for 25 minutes through this long run and coach it there's no doubt about it that when I get back from Tokyo I am going to take a little bit of a break from running I'll still have running as you know something that I do a few times a week but looking at all the other ways and all the other things that I've kind of put on the back burner that I love to do so not sure if I'm going to you know I've never actually done Pilates so I'm considering Pilates um that's tough have you done it it's tough no. Okay. <laughs> I feel like that was a really big letdown. No, um, <laughs> but there's there's machines and ropes and there there's um again I, I'm I'm not 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 safe for work today. I yeah. can't I can't <laughs> seem to pivot out of that. But um, no, I've not done Pilates. I thought about it, and then I have not. But I've done a lot of other cross training stuff. I've done kickboxing. Uh, I did do the swimming when I was doing the triathlon. I've done some jumping rope in my strength training, but not not anything like what Bernadette's doing. But I love the way she her the love that she mm-hmm. has for it just exudes. And I would like to find some activity other than running that gives me that type of spark. So, I mean, we've talked about that you've tried everything under the sun. So mm-hmm. will you not go back to anything that you've tried? Yeah, I likely would. I likely would. Um, I loved rowing. So I actually have a rowing for adult kind of like a crew um, near me uh, at a local lake that I have. So I've looked into joining them. What's kept me from joining them is that they do meet at like four or five o'clock in the morning. And something about being on a lake in Florida in summer at that time where I think alligators are feeding and mosquitoes are feasting off of you sounds not that enjoyable. Um, so I, I thought it was just because it was early. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the early part is not great, but yeah, I'm just, I'm not also a fan of like, we, we seriously have a, an incredibly intense mosquito season when it comes to those. So I just, I don't know that I'm down with that. Um, 
I probably, off the top of my head, see myself getting into a really good, not necessarily cross training, but a really strong strength training cycle again, because I'm just, especially after the particular training plan that I used for Tokyo, I'm looking forward to having a lot more strength training focus. Um, and I could see myself, if I'm just going to be 100% honest, I really have been wanting to get back into pole fitness. And if we had a pole fitness studio in my little area of the world, I would absolutely join that. But as of right now, we have every other type of boutique fitness. We have Pilates, we have uh, F45, we have, um, gosh, Bar and Hot Works. I feel like we have every single studio. Every, we've got three different spinning studios, but we don't have pole fitness or a yoga studio. Really? See, I when I did the pole fitness class, granted it was for a bachelorette party, but it was it was somewhere in Orlando. Yeah, we have lots of pole fitness in Orlando, but not necessarily in my neighborhood, just oh. of my little segment area, and it could be kind of hard to travel into those places. I'm not saying I wouldn't do it, but realistically, in terms of cross training, that's the appeal that I have with running is that I could literally just go out the door and you can fit it into your day versus a very structured time that you have to meet for a class. And I just don't see myself getting in 45 minutes worth of traffic to go anywhere, to be honest. I do have a rock climbing gym Maybe. nearby. So I've considered that we as well. We need to do that. We have <laughs> talked about that. And I think when I come for springtime surprise, I don't even care if it's before the races. Don't do that. No no one else take that advice, but I don't even, I don't even care for me. So I really want to do that. I actually did love the pole fitness. And I think it's important to note here the pole fitness you're clothed like this isn't in, in a uh, adult entertainment setting it's the same type of poles and all of that but it's not meant to be for other enjoyments it's just something for yourself it's actually really empowering yeah it is and it's hard and I, I still, I go back to, I didn't realize the pole spun. And that was a game changer, which also was how I fell on my butt multiple times. The spinning poles are so much easier to use than the knot. Like when you, um, you can make it static by putting it. I actually used to have one in my house. Um, <laughs> that took a weird turn too. But because I was super duper into pole fitness for the record friends. So yes, like um, I don't have one now. So I'd have to find a studio. But yeah, it's something that I'm considering. We'll see. There's so many fun things to do. I'm going to allow myself to just find a lot of joy in whatever I do. But probably my main focus will be a good, strong strength training cycle. I'm going to have to really look in more to doing the jumping rope because it does sound really cool. Dude, and it's, it's similar so awesome. to the fact of the running. Like, I have the privilege of being able to go in my front area and jump rope or jump goat down my street or anything like that. I will say a weighted jump rope for me was a game changer just because I didn't have to worry. Um, should have actually gotten recommendations from Bernadette about which rope is the best, but I'm pretty sure that we'll just have to have her back on and she, pick she her brain has, some more. She sells some weighted jump ropes, so you could probably <gasps> check oh. check those out on her store. Um, yeah, because oh. she's got she's got some jump rope sets. I think that there are they can get really expensive for the record. Yeah. Um, I mean, so can everything. Yeah. Running shoes, let's not even talk about how much money we've spent on running shoes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that. thanks for, for bringing me down there a little bit, coach. Um, but <laughs> I think that, yes, it's a matter of, I always suggest kind of with everything, it's like just dip your toe into it first before you make any kind of those really big expensive commitments. Um, yeah, but she's got some great recommendations as well. It looks like Cross Rope is the brand that she tends to gravitate towards. I bet that is a weighted rope, by the way, as I look at it. It makes sense. But yeah, I I admittedly need to get better with my cross training. Um, I do pretty decent with my stretching and my strength training, but that's an extra piece of the puzzle that I need to be more focused on. And you can tell I've been pausing to change my words. Yeah. Because I don't want to bring myself down and say I need to be better at it. But I'm, I need to be more focused at it. Like we talked with Bernadette about choosing the words of finding the time or making the time and kind of not defeating ourselves. And this isn't the same as like people say like, oh, no excuses. And I say it just like that because it's <laughs> honestly how I read every of those captions. Like, oh, push past your excuses. It's like, 
no, like it's not an excuse. It's a real barrier. Mm -hmm. But not letting myself focus on the barrier and focusing on how I can work around or control that barrier. Because shortage yeah. of time is a reality. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it just is. There's only 24 hours in the day, which is not enough. Do I want the days to be longer? No. But I would like to spend my time wiser. So just yeah. a little, little extra think tank as you're in this endurance walk, guys. Yes. And as I'm sure all of us can say that when we are in the season of training for an endurance event, event be it a half marathon or a full marathon, that a lot of things go on the back burner. And that's what I look at the off training cycle. It doesn't mean that running is something that I don't do. It just allows me to really, really incorporate some things that I am not able to do quite as much during a full endurance block. So I think that that's something that I hear a lot of runners say. Like, how do you do it all? How do you cross train and run and strength train and still have a life? Realistically, you're not going to, it's not going to look perfect. You're not going to be able to necessarily really do it all. Um, it's, and that's just finding ways to make it happen. So I think that's where I know fan, you're a fan of shorter stretching segments that you can do while you're doing other things, incorporating them into uh, maybe while you're answering emails on your cell phone. I told you that during this particular training cycle that all of my book reading went to audiobooks because I just don't have the time at this point to sit down to read the books, but it's still something that I enjoy. So a lot of just figuring out ways to make it look right. But again, I wasn't able to cross train anywhere near as much. I really, honestly, I had to prioritize what it was that I wanted to put my focus on and running took the front seat. So that's why I think that I'm looking forward to having a little bit of a downtime to look at the other, all the other things that have been my side chicks that have been calling. I'm going to hit them back a little bit, <laughs> slide into their DMs a little bit and see how it goes. Well, and again, I mean, we say it a lot, but also reframing and readjusting the perspectives. Like you were very open this entire Tokyo training cycle that it looked vastly different and you had a bob and weave a lot different. Right now I've been transparent. My season of life, it's uh, it's a mixed bag. And you actually helped me troubleshoot because I was complaining, which I fully admit. And there was another not nice word that was not complaining, but again, keeping it clean um, to you about how I just felt like I was not being able to find the time. And you would help me troubleshoot and really brought me back to the core portions that I know as a coach, mm -hmm. but often have a hard time applying to myself. And one of them was embracing the run walk when I'm out for my my exercise with my kid. You know, she's not a long distance runner by any means. I mean, I'll, I'll give her a little break. She's not even in double digits, <laughs> but embracing the run walk on the scooter and me running, me walking, and I did it last night. Was it as zen-like as I love? No. Was it the best workout I've ever had? Also no. Mm -hmm. But did I get up and get moving? Yes. And that's where time on my feet, miles in the bank, reworking, and it doesn't mean that you have to be ecstatic about it. Was I so over the moon euphoric? No. <laughs> But I was really happy and proud that I did it and I got something in it. And it's also honestly a great memory because two birds, one stone. I'm being a good mom and a good athlete. And, and a role model. It makes Don't me a better person. Aspect. And such a great yeah. role model because you're actually practicing what you preach. So um, for your daughter and all those around you as well. So, yeah, I think and I would have you change that up a little bit, though, as it not being a great workout. It may not have left you with all those incredible endorphins that we get from those harder effort runs or some of the, you know, like those just really great. Um, <laughs> I want to talk about the fact that you call it now abracadabranoids, but we'll talk about that at a later <laughs> time. But it was still a great workout because you were building your aerobic base. And there's so much to be True. said about those uh, easier or sexier paced runs that allow us. With, and that's, I had mentioned to you, that's where Run Walk really kind of steals my heart in regards to helping me to stay in that really good, easy pace of aerobic capacity building since so many of our miles need to be in that anyway. So yeah, it's a matter it was a sexy pace. I'll admit, I got a little bit of joy where like looking at my heart rate, I'm like, dang. I'm like, you were sexy and fine. I kind of want to now like be like, was mine sexier or was yours sexier? And you know, I kind Who's of sexy. Love it. I'm sexy. Who's <laughs> sexy? I'm sexy. Because I too had a really sexy pace run. Um, 
where I actually ended up calling my dad. Like I realized like, okay, that took a turn. (laughs) That is weird. I called him because I was like, I'm on such a uh, easy run here that I could call and have a full conversation with him. And literally, like, as you mentioned, killing two birds with one stone and that I talk to my dad quite frequently, but because my runs are so monster long, I don't necessarily have as much time. And instead of having just a quick check in with him, I wanted to actually have a good conversation with him. I was like, well, I'm by myself, but I could still do conversation pace. So I just gave him a call and we chit chatted while I was running. So I found it quite enjoyable. Um, also too, because those miles can get long. Yeah, they can. Like, I, I do love that. And I don't want to segue. We really probably should stop saying two birds, one stone, because that really is a very horrific type of saying. Okay. But and I will scared. laugh. I don't know what it means. Okay, go ahead. It literally means what it means to kill two birds with one stone. Oh, okay. Like, I'm it's not. dark. That's okay. I mean, I eat chicken curls, so I'm fine with that, if that's all it means. Mm. <laughs> At least I think that's what it means. But I do have to tell a funny story. The other day, Christine texts me and she goes, hey, I need a little extra motivation. Do you want to meet for a run later? And I'm assuming she didn't mean to text me. So I'm like, I mean, yeah, I'll run with you. But that's a little far of a drive for like five miles. And I'm like, did you mean to text somebody else? And she goes, no, I mean like a virtual run. I'm like, oh, I'm like, went right (laughs) over my head. I laughed for like five minutes. And my husband goes, what is going on? And he calls Christine Lady Glitter Sparkles. (laughs) And (laughs) so I sat there. I'm like, I should know that. Like our entire relationship is based on virtual. Why did I think that she was meaning for me to drive or thinking that she was texting someone else? I just thought I was infiltrating every facet of her brain, which I'm pretty sure I've done that too. Well, you have. And I'm I'm super excited. We've mentioned it now a little bit that we have a train that's going to be connecting your side of the world and... In my side of the world and I think we're both like ecstatic that it'll start making trips here soon so likely there's gonna be more of hopefully a lot more of us being able to connect in person to do some brunch activities and get in some long runs together um but bringing it back to cross training and having a whole lot of fun you know something that I did do is I took a lot of dance classes for extra fun. So like I've taken belly dance and burlesque and I've taken tap and jazz and I haven't taken contemporary, which is something that I would love to take. Um, but I feel like it may be a little too free flowing for me. It's not, it's, it's actually choreographed, but I think that like, I don't have what it takes to do yet without any kind of actual like dedicated study. Those kind of really fluid movements contemporary tends to bring. See, I don't, I don't know if I'm, if classes are necessarily my, my jam. Group fitness. Yeah. Okay, so you're more of a, a solo kind of. I'm a lone wolf. I'm a one woman wolf pack over here. I don't, I, I, I like people. I think. I just, I don't know. Now I'm questioning my. Well, it's interesting because cycling ends up becoming so much better if you're meeting with a cycling group, but you never cycled with others. No, I literally don't exercise with other people ever. And maybe that's why I'm just better off being alone. You better get used to it. really sad. I'm going to force you to exercise with me whenever this train comes into play. So if you, I'm just letting you know that's going to happen. Because it it really does bind a really good connection with the other individual. I'm not saying that you have to do it all the time. But honestly, it really does help you really connect with the other person in a way that I don't think you can connect without that exercise. It's like, I don't know. If we're any more connected, I'm pretty sure we're going to have to get like a D adhesive. Um, yeah, why not? <laughs> I don't even know what it's called. That's why it's D adhesive. I, I don't know what that is either. Is that I make like, up so many words. So something to, that helps to remove the sticky residue of, adhe- of adhesive. I have no clue what that would be either. It Do you want to like- know a hit? Uh, I have a hack to oh. remove. Okay, this is like totally not brunch related, but it's too good of a hack not to share. You know when you go to like one of the discount retailers and they have the stickers and you can't get them off and you're trying to like scratch them off with your nail? Yes. Okay. So instead of scratching it off, take a hair dryer, put it on high heat, heat the sticker. It makes the glue unadhesive, whatever the word is, and it'll peel off. 
literally just heard that or just saw that on like an Instagram reel or a TikTok or a Facebook reel, something like that in like the last week. And I thought, is that true? It does that is. really work? It is. It does. It's amazing and it's life changing. And the only reason I'm bringing up is because you're we talking about adhesive and again, welcome to my brunch lot, my brunch brain. Ooh. These are things people need to know. This is Ooh. hard hitting news. It is. Um, I'm very curious if anybody else has that hack that they've used in their back pocket or if they're going to use that hack, let us know. So, Coach, I'm just going to totally change the subject. There's no segue there, bringing it back to cross training. <laughs> <laughs> She's trying. She's trying to make fetch like, happen, guys. How, how does that happen? Um, how do you even, like, how do we, like, segue out of hacks? Do you have We need to hacks? stick to cross training. Ooh, See, right, there you go. You. So. Thanks. What is something that you have wanted to try that you haven't yet done? Because I feel like, oh, trapeze. I want to try that. I haven't done that yet. Oh, God, no. You're on your own with that one. (laughs) No. That is not happening. I have a child to live for. We have an aerial art group here, like a big warehouse that has it. And I mean, I've done a lot of their other things. Like I've done silks and um, I'm the worst at silks. But I'm trying to think what else I have. I think they have mainly silks and trapeze. So I can't do that because of my vertigo. Like I would get all discombobulated. I really do want to try rock climbing. I think that that would be so much fun. Um, I would like to do a spin class because I think it would be interesting. Mostly just because there's a lot of music involved. But I think you would love spinning. You would love it's literally a party is all spinning is inside. Like, cause the music is so heavy hitting and they turn the lights off and you're really able to get into your own little world. Um, see, this is another like good point that like, I'm not super competitive. So whenever I do indoor spinning, I could care less about the leaderboard, um, what other people are doing. I really do quite literally stay in my own lane on a bike that goes nowhere. So it, um, <laughs> But I think you would like it. And I think I could see you feeding off the competitive aspect quite a bit as well. What about step classes? Have you ever done step classes? Like old school step aerobics? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Without a doubt. Did you like it? Yes. Am I necessarily coordinated to do it? Not really. But do I still like it? Yeah. I'm thinking, has there been a cross training that I didn't like? I don't think so. Anything where you have to be quiet. I've never experienced that because I'm still going to talk. <laughs> are you that person at yoga classes that's talking like, hey, how are you? Are you doing good? Do you need a towel? Yes. Thankfully, I have a yoga <laughs> studio, not in my neighborhood, but close enough to where they do allow us to kind of just enjoy a bit more of just kind of, you know, if you giggle or you're chatting with your friends, actually, they have a Sunday brunch um, yoga that's like set to music and it's so much fun. I always enjoy that one. Uh, So what I'm hearing basically is we're going to have to figure out a way for me to try all of the things that you've already tried and find some class aerobic anything that you have not tried, which I feel like is going to be difficult. I'm literally trying to figure out what that would be. Pilates is it that I could think of and um, trapeze. But, you know, like a long time ago, I have a girlfriend who's also pretty, um, I guess, adventurous with all of her activities as well. So do you know the guys try it again or try it, guys? Like they have a BuzzFeed channel. They have some controversy here recently, but basically they would try a bunch of things and they had their own little YouTube. No, No, I have to admit that most of my feed is all women. I follow very few dudes. So they were actually pretty fascinating and they would try a whole bunch of different things, like all over the gamut. Like even um, one of them is like, they would get, they got their nails done and they had to figure out how like to deal with having longer nails and doing their daily activities, walking in heels. They've had, I think they even did like where um, there's a simulator to simulate women's cramps, menstrual cramps. So it was fascinating watching them take that on. But we talked about doing like a fitness aspect of try it again, guys. We were talking about calling ourselves the give it a whirl girls (laughs) because we honestly really do find so much fascinating fitness stuff. So maybe it's time that brunch takes on give it a whirl girls. And we, and we figure it out together now that we've got that train coming that can connect us. 
Ooh, can I be the trio? Can I can I bring up the caboose? Yeah, like I'm you're it, girl. Like we got to make sure you oh. try all these things. What are you talking about? Oh, I like, thought you're I thought you're talking about your other friend. No, I'm talking about you. Oh, I thought you were talking about your other friend. I'm like, well, can I crash? Because no, you're kind you're of inviting me without inviting me. We'll invite them, <laughs> but no, absolutely, oh, okay. you're you're the main deal. We have to get we have to have you try all these things out. We did a whining class once. It's also dance. Have you heard of whining? No, I, I mean okay. I do whining daily, but I'm not sure we're talking about the same thing. It's winding actually, but they call it whining. It's a dance move, and it's more like. Afro-Caribbean beats, like a little bit of reggae focused or Jamaican oh. dance hall focused. You're piquing my interest. It, I think you would be a natural at it. Um, that was actually really interesting because it's it can be, a, I won't say that it's hypersexualized, but it is definitely a little bit more, you know, you're, you're comfortable with your body. And I believe that my boss at that time, his wife was there and I'm like, okay, this is I don't know, like I want to give her her space so she can do her own whining thing and I want to do my space so I can do my own whining thing and we're not going to ever really like mention it again. Like we'll just not mention the fact that we saw each other in this class, but I will say she was way better at it than I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, with that, what do you think it's about time for, Coach? We have a couple more minutes before we pull it back into our cool down and we have such a great question in the works today because I think this is I'm a question excited. that so many runners have and that I can't imagine any kind of a training cycle that this may not come up. So we're not we're not going to tease you guys out too much. We'll let you know in just about 90 seconds. So this is your time, friends. If you do want to have a little bit of a pickup, you want to do it here and now. If you want to stay steady in that pace until we pull it back, you can do that as well. I know I really want to sign up for more classes. I'm going to have to do some Googling and maybe again, when I come up for springtime surprise, we'll have to, we'll have to go maybe to one of the, the pole dancing aerobics and we, we'll make the pilgrimage together. Would you do a daybreaker party with me? Cause you guys have it down in South Florida. I'd come down there in a heartbeat for a What's daybreaker that? party. So it's like, a, they start with a yoga and then it's like a dance party, but it's um, in the morning. Um, Are you going to wake up for it? For this party, yes. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so run Disney and this party, that that's okay. That's the crocodiles and the rowing or alligators and <laughs> the running, that's a no. Good I to mean, know. I'm making a running it's list. It's the mosquitoes more than the alligators. Seriously. I know. Is that bad that, that we're scared of a bug? No, they're the ones, like, they're like the most dangerous animal in the world is a mosquito. More people die from mosquitoes than any other kind of animal or insect, whatever. They're in the same family. Wow. We brought this down. Yeah. Um, let's talk about the daybreaker. We'll talk about that too, because that's so much fun. I'm telling you, I think that it was definitely speaks to me because there's a lot of like shiny sparkly stuff and bubbles and yeah, it's, it's definitely my thing. All right, friends, in 15 seconds, we're going to pull it back down to our cool down. So again, nice, tall, relaxed light all the way through. You can drop on in and let us know some of your favorite cross training of course we want to hear all about it in three two and one let's pull it back coach five minutes here for us to chit chat about this amazing question that we recently tackled with the training group our spring training group which was what happens when i miss a long run basically and yep cut and dry it's like hey again we talked about life gets busy things happen you miss a run. It's bound to happen. I have yet to meet a runner that says I have not missed a run. So let's differentiate a little bit because she actually specifically called out long run versus like a weekday shorter run. And True. I think that the longer run is the one that most people are bit. So friends, we can talk about definitely, um, and we probably should dedicate a quick bites to it all the way around because life does happen. But we're going to focus this conversation on the long run because there's so much to tackle on it. So if you have a long run, we're always going to say, what do we say, coach? Don't just focus on the long run. But we also say everything depends. So it really depends on where you're at in your training cycle. Oh, I went a different way. <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> It depends on where you're at in your training cycle. It depends what your actual goals are. If you're actually endurance training or if you're looking at something else as your goal during your training. Um, I think that for the most part, the biggest rule of thumb that across the board is that you likely do not need to make up the long run. You can just kind of, I think I said, just kind of leave it in the rear view mirror, drive off and not beat yourself up about it too much because I think 
as runners, we tend to do that. We get we tend to really, really get aggravated or frustrated with ourselves. Also reminding you that you're not going to lose all of your fitness because you missed one run. Um, and that's the case regardless if it was a speed session or it was an endurance block or it was a shorter, easy run. You're not going to lose all your fitness. So that is a great, great right out of the gate. Just want to remind you of that. But I think we talked about a couple different ways that if you wanted to make it up as well, how you could do it. And I think the easiest thing, again, depending, is to look at your week and to figure out if there's somewhere that you could substitute an easier run. And I would make sure that you keep that as far away as possible as you can from your next long run. So don't try to double up your next long run. Don't try to add that mileage to like your midweek long run. Um, definitely there's so much in, in regards to that. Like, so my first inclination would be that likely you need to just leave it behind and move on. But again, depending where you're on your training cycle, it may be best to check in to see if you need to replace one of your other runs for the week. And I will say for this specific athlete, we're working on time on the feet and just really um, keeping that overall monthly mileage at a consistent place, whether it be walking or running. So instead for where this athlete was at, I sprinkled in for her cross training, um, a little bit of an uptick in the walking, not by much. I didn't go crazy, didn't put every single mile that was in the long run into the walking plan, but still incorporate it in a way that was safe, would not, uh, make the risk of injury higher, mm -hmm. but still working towards the overall goal. And this is where I will say, shameless plug, having a coach makes a ton of difference because we do take the emotion out of it. We take all of that disappointment that comes with it out of it. And we look at it from more of that stats metric right. where we can look at it objectively. And yes. that's where we were able to keep it in a, a healthy productive space versus again trying just be like okay I missed that long run I'm gonna throw it in here and just hope and go on a wing and a prayer absolutely and I think that we can balance out the physiological um, adaptations or physiological benefits that it would have to make it up versus the injury risk that you would have to make it up in a way that I think again as you mentioned because we could be much more objective and we allow the numbers to kind of speak for themselves um, is definitely the way to go because I can honestly say that me on the other shoe, I would, for myself, that's the first thing that would go through my mind is I have to make it up. I don't want to miss a run. Yeah. I don't want to go into it without missing, you know, with a, without actually making it up. So really having that perspective is so beneficial, which friends, we are opening, opening up our summer marathon training group before you know it. But until then, if you're interested, if you want to be in the interested waited li waiting list, because we have a few fun announcements coming up for that as well, um, do check out our actual, we'll have it here in episode notes. Go ahead and sign up for the waiting list for when we do open up and can share all of the details once it's official. You're definitely going to want to be on that waiting list so you can be make be made known first. Um, so friends, if you have any questions for us, you're always welcome to reach out. If you are kind of, you just need a little bit of uh, a different perspective, a coaching perspective, feel free to reach out to us at info at time for um, If you have a question that you want to have with Coffee with the Coaches, you could always reach out to us at 347-927-8624. That's 347-9-BRUNCH. And of course, friends, we want to give you a big round of applause. Make sure you pat yourself on the back. Give yourself a high five. Rehydrate and refuel with, as we heard in today, the team sweet one finally with some of whatever your brunch-tastic favorites are though. And while you recover and reset for your next brunch, we would appreciate if you take the time to subscribe and rate Time for Brunch on Spotify or Apple as well. Share our podcast with others using the hashtag TF Brunch on social media. We want to continue growing this community, finding our purpose and making sure that people feel confident in their selves, empowering them as well. And obviously keep bringing back all these amazing guests. Don't forget to check out Quick Bites Edition, a light movement focused episode on 20 to 30 minutes and link on Wednesday. We'll see you soon, friends. We're going to be bringing more miles with a side of smiles.